Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be making a tool setter mount for a DVF 5000. Originally the tool setter was mounted on a pneumatic arm that would move in and out of the work area. But that's pretty slow to move in and out every time. It does have the advantage of being outside of the machining travel so it's not in the way. Now they have an option for a split laser system, but the split lasers tend not to be very accurate and there were too many accuracy and repeatability problems with it. So, to have the mechanical tool setter back on there without the problem of having to move it in and out of the work area every time, I'm going to machine a mount to put it on the side of the trunnion. Since this part has some angled features on it and I only want to do it in two setups, I'm going to start by machining it on the fourth axis. It's important to use flat stones on precision surfaces so you don't accidentally clamp it on a high spot on the surface. With the coolant we're running, I notice some staining under places where things have been mounted like a vise or on a laying plate. So the easiest way to take care of this is just with some WD-40 and some Scotch-Brite. And obviously I'll stone that surface as well. Now I could directly mount a laying vise to the laying plate on this fourth axis, but it wouldn't be in a convenient orientation for me, for me to machine all the features. So I'm going to use a trunnion adapter to put the vise in a more convenient orientation. Lang vices have serrated jaws on them. This will give you very good holding power on raw stock. If you want even more holding power, you can pre-stamp the stock. This is using a hydraulic powered uh, pre-stamper with the same serrated jaws on them to put the uh, stamping marks in there before clamping in the vise. This will give you a little stronger holding power. These pre-stamping marks can also be used to locate your stock and vise. For roughing this part out, I'll just use a standard half-inch end mill to hide all the material away. as well as roughing in the 3D surfacing faces. With this tall stack up of vices and long tools, it can be a little bit sketchy to do tool changes, so I just have the table move out of the way before doing it. That way I don't crash any tools into my uh, part. I'm using the same tool to 3D surface in that angled feature and to finish the floor, that way I won't have any blending problems with the tools being different lengths. Where the tool setter actually sits on, I can machine just by rotating the fourth axis. The only drill we have for an M12 tap is a jobber length drill, so I'm going to have to spot this before drilling so it doesn't walk on me. It's also just a standard cobalt drill, so I will be pecking when drilling.
I'm also only starting the threads with rigid tapping and finishing them by hand. Most importantly, I'm going to add in some chamfers. Where I'm not able to chamfer with a chamfer mill, I'll 3D surface in the chamfer with a ball mill. And just for some added cool factor, I'm going to add in an engraving. For up to, I'm just going to put this part in a curt vise. But since I have nowhere to pick up on the part, I'm going to put some 1, 2, 3 blocks in the vise and pick up on those. Because of the angled section of this part, I have to put the parallels in the vise in a rather goofy way to have it only sitting on the flat portions, as well as having not having the angled portion touch the bottom of the vise. It's always a good idea to machine the top hat off your part before facing down the top so you don't have any big chunks flying off. I was also too lazy to put a face mill in this machine, so I'm just facing it with a half inch check mill. Now you do get bonus points for finishing at a 45 degree angle for the coolness factor. Because one of the counterboards was so deep, I wasn't able to put the through hole in the first stop, so I can just machine that easily in the second op. But you may be wondering, how did I chamfer that then? Well, I obviously put a backside chamfer tool in the machine, so I'm not missing any chamfers. Then I'll just use a standard chamfer mill for the rest of the edges. Now that we have all the mill work done, I can finish those M12 threads by hand. as well as press fit in a pin. Now I know you're all on the edge of your seat right now wondering what the surface finish of this part is. Well lucky for you we just got a profilometer. The surface finish on that face is about 4.8. Is that good? Is it bad? I don't really know. I honestly have no clue what I'm doing. Ever. Counterboards in a machine will immediately fill up with chips and coolant. So the easiest way to fix this is just by 3D printing some TPU plugs. To get best results when 3D printing TPU, 
I do recommend drying the filament. And storing it in a box with desiccant. So now it's just as simple as uh, mounting it in the machine and measuring some tools. Ah!